launch advanced design and start a new project. Skip the first page by clicking next and on the second page define your default settings for the project. When creating a model it is useful to be able to group similar objects together. In advanced design subsystems allow you to do this. In the pilot right click structure and select systems management. Create a subsystem from the context menu and then type portal frames. We will keep all the steel elements forming the portal frames in this subsystem. Next we will create five more subsystems called Story, Roof, Wind Bracings, Foundation and Wind Walls. As we create new objects we will place them into one of these six subsystems. Click on the portal frame subsystem to make it active. When a subsystem is active, any new objects we create will be added to the subsystem. Next, select the Create a Linear Element command from the Modeling Toolbar. Open the Materials dialog box and select S235 Steel. Click inside the Cross Section Extremity 1 cell as shown here to open the Cross Sections Libraries. Select a UKB 406 by 178 by 67 cross section. Click on the origin to place the first end of the column. Then type 0, 7 in the command line separated by a space. Select the linear elements and then select the copy command from the CAD modifications toolbar. Select the translation copy mode and make sure that the rotation mode is disabled. In the vector field Type the element's coordinates separated with space characters 18, 0, 0. Click Copy and then Close. Now select the Create a Linear Element command again. Click on the top of the first column to place the first end of the rafter and then type the coordinates of the second end 9, 8 and press Enter. Draw the second rafter by placing the cursor at the ends of the first rafter and the second column. Now select the story subsystem and select the create a linear element command again and make this an S235 UKC 203 by 203 by 46. Click at the coordinates 7, 0 and type the end coordinates 7, 3.5. Right click in the drawing area, then select Snap Modes from the context menu. In the Snap Modes dialog box, click Perpendicular and OK. Draw the story beam by clicking first on the top of the story column and then on the portal frame column's perpendicular snap point. Select the Foundation subsystem from the pilot. Select Create a rigid point support command from the modeling toolbar. In the support properties window, select the restraint type hinge. Place the supports by snapping to the bases of the three columns. In the pilot, select loading, right click and from the context menu, select create several case families. Type 1 for dead loads and one for live loads families. Then click Create. These load case families and their load cases are now displayed in the pilot. Select the 2Q load case from the pilot and then select the Create a Point Load command from the modeling toolbar. In the Point Loads Properties window, define a force intensity of Fz minus 5 kilonewtons. Then create the loads with a click at the top of each column and on the joint between the two rafters. Now we'll create the other five portal frames using copy command. Switch to the minus one minus one one view on the predefined views toolbar. From the drop down list on the filters and selection toolbar, choose selection by all. Select the copy command. Select the Translation Copy Mode. In the Vector field, type the element's coordinates 0, minus 6, 0. 
set the number of copied elements in the number field to 5. Click preview to view the effect then confirm the action by clicking copy. Click the zoom all command on the zoom toolbar to view all the elements in the drawing area. Next we will draw purlins on the building's rafters. Select the roof subsystem and select the create a linear element command again and make this an S235 127 by 76 by 13 UKB. Place the first rafter by clicking on the ends of the first and last rafter of the framework. We will now modify the eccentricity and orientation of the purlin so that it is aligned to the top of the rafter. Select the create a point command from the modeling toolbar. Click where the rafters join on the first portal frame to place a point. Select the purlin. Then change the eccentricity to 0, 7 plus. By default, the section's local Z axis is aligned to the global Z axis. But if you specify an orientation point as here, the Z axis will point towards that point. The purlin Z axis should be at 90 degrees to the point we have placed. So enter orientation angle 90 and point 1. Select the copy command. Select the translation copy mode and select the second translation copy type by clicking the button shown here. To define the copy vector, click here, then place the cursor on the two extremities of the first rafter. in the number field type 6. Click Advanced, then take Destination System and select the Roof System from its drop down list. Click Preview to check the effect and then Copy. Select the top purlin and remove the angle and the point ID under Orientation in the Properties window. We will now show three possible ways to copy the purlins to the other side of the building. The first method is to use the Symmetries dialog box. Select all purlins except the top purlin. Select the Symmetries dialog box from the CAD modifications toolbar. Activate copy mode and click here to select the plane symmetry type. Choose the YZ plane for the symmetric copy from the drop down list. Choose the reference point by clicking this button and in the drawing area clicking on the top purlin. Click preview to check the effect and then apply. The second method is a shortcut to the first method for when you can copy by reference point in the model. Select the six purlins and then select the plane symmetry command from the CAD modifications toolbar. Place the cursor on the top purlin to take it into account as a reference element for the vertical plane symmetry. A preview of the copied elements appears. Click to confirm the copy. The third method is by rotation. Select the six purlins. Select the rotation command from the CAD modifications toolbar. A message in the command line asks you to define the rotation axis. Type P to perform a two points axis definition. Click each end of the top purlin to define this element as the rotation axis. To define the vector for the element's rotation, first click the left extremity of the front rafter. Then to define the second point, click the right extremity of the rafter to place the copied purlins. Now that the copied elements are on the opposite side of the orientation reference point, their angle should be minus 90 instead of 90 degrees, so select the copied purlins and change their orientation angle. Now we will add beams and slabs to the story. Select the story subsystem from the pilot. Select the create a linear element command again and make this a 203 by 203 by 46 UKC. In the snow and wind category, define the supporting element as disabled. Draw the story beam along the y-axis connecting the portal frames at the story level. Select the create a planar element command from modeling toolbar. Check that the planar element type is shell. Select 3037 for material. For thickness, Type 180mm for the first vertex. In the snow and wind category, define the supporting element as disabled. Draw the story slab by snapping to the ends of the previously created beams.
Now we will add wind bracing. Select the wind bracing subsystem from the pilot. Select the create a chain linear element command. Then choose the linear element type bar. The bar element type is suitable for bracing because it can only support axial loading. Choose a 33.7 by 33.7 by 4 CHS cross section. Place the bracing as shown using snap points. Next we will place the wind walls. Wind walls are not structural elements. They define an area over which a load can be applied. Loads on wind walls are distributed to structural elements lying within their boundaries that are defined as supporting elements. Select the wind wall subsystem from the pilot. Select the create a wind wall element command from the modeling toolbar. Draw the wind walls on the framework lateral sides and on the roof slopes. In the wind walls properties window we need to define the direction of span towards the supporting elements. The portal frames columns for the lateral wind walls and the rafters for the roof wind walls. To make the direction of span symbol on wind walls visible, select the axes rendering type from the rendering toolbar. Now select the wind walls and set their span directions to X. This means their span will be parallel to the planar element's local X axis. Now to apply the loading. In the pilot select the story subsystem, right click and choose select from the context menu. Then click the filter button on the filters and selection toolbar. This displays only the selected elements and hides the rest. In the pilot select the Q load case and access create a planar load command then type the FZ intensity minus 3 kilonewtons. Draw the planar loads by snapping the corners of the first span of the story slab as shown. Then copy the load to the remaining slabs. In the pilot, right click loading and select create a case family from the context menu. Select wind EN1991-14. A wind family with a default wind load case is created in the pilot. Right click the wind EN1991-14 family and select automatic generation from the context menu. This command automatically creates wind load cases and corresponding loads. In the pilot, under Assumption, select Combinations, right-click and select Properties from the context menu. In the Combinations dialog box, click Define and select Generate to create your code load combinations. Click OK to apply and exit. From the main menu, select Analyze, Create the Analysis Model. Select FE Calculation. While the automatic processes are performed, the details are displayed in the command line. The command line also informs you when the calculation is finished. From the FE results toolbar, select the result type as displacements, the results coordinates on the linear and planar elements D and the load case 7VXS. Click here to display the results dialog box, select the options tab and select display results on the deformed option. Click OK to exit the dialog box and display the results. Click this button to view the animation of the displacement results. The predefined view toolbar is useful for quickly changing the view of the model. Choose the front view to look directly at the front of the model. Then choose the minus one minus one one view. Change the load case to one G. Change the load case. Change the result type to forces. And change the results on linear elements to MY. 
and then click the Create the Post Processing button to update the display. Now set the results on planar elements to MYY to see the results on the slabs. Change the results on linear elements to FZ and set the results on planar elements to FZZ and update the display. Now we will view stress results on the model.